Do you think it's like a trauma thing? No, that's a good question. Like maybe it started that way. Like yeah. now we just genuinely what we've been doing it's really fun. Because it's less like nobody knows that you guys know. Yeah, he knows I know. Okay. I actually invented this. So a little bit more about this. Um, <laughs> I actually invented the color black. And, oh, um, what? Yeah. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. You know. And how this works is you basically have to like put air in it and, mm -hmm. and then it fries the air. That's why it's called an air fryer. Yeah, no, uh, don't thank me, but like it took me a couple hours to come up with the invention. And then it took me like like maybe approximately like 20 minutes to get it patented. I was just like on a roll. Like yeah. I think I think this is like the prime of my Hey guys. Um. Was that it? Akechi Universe pop-up. Their clothes are just like so artistic. Like, I just want to wear stuff like that and like make stuff like that. Like, it's so inspiring. And also there were a lot of really cool artists there. My friend Sonia had her work there. I got one of her prints. I love this dude. Or these dudes. <laughs> they're going on my wall. I love meeting people who see everything in a kind of artistic light. I feel like there weren't a lot of those people in my life a while back. And now I have more creative individuals around me. So that's really nice to have kind of bouncing off of each other for inspiration. I'll show you guys my outfit. Hey guys, this week is already really tiring and it's only Tuesday, so. I've been doing a lot of my work on the floor lately. I've been painting a little more. This project was something that I did on my own, but I was inspired by my introductory studio class to make something a little more long-term, you know, a piece that I could leave and come back to and revisit every once in a while, because for that class, we had to work on one piece for the entire semester. So that was really like humbling and insightful. So I want to make more long-term art just to see how it turns out. I started to feel a bit under the weather, so I went back home for a little bit and rested there. You know, I got to sleep in my mattress and just sit in my room for a little while, and that was really nice. I got to get some rest. Also, this croc was on the side of my building when I got back. At this point, I was about halfway through this drawing. It was about halfway through the semester. So usually I didn't work on this at home, but this time I did because I was falling behind a little bit. And as you can see, there's like red and orange and yellow and green. So now I'm on blue at this point. And we have some paper cutouts that we had to kind of, um, ha like we had to let them materialize. So I really had to draw like right around the paper to really get those shapes. And now I'm in the kitchen. I decided to use my air fryer to air fryer. Um, I decided to use my air fryer to roast some vegetables. I wanted to see how that works. I definitely prefer just using an actual oven, but the air fryer is convenient. But it's basically a convection oven, but shittier. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the voiceover. I did not script this or outline it or anything. I'm so tired and lazy, so you're just gonna listen to me ramble. 
This project was for my drawing to class. We basically had to tape two 18 by 24 pieces of paper together and then cover the whole surface in charcoal and you know smudge it out, make sure there's no paper showing through. And then we pretty much had to reverse our brains and draw the inverse of the uh, the fabric that we had to draw for the project. Um, we had to display fabric, our clothes pretty much in some way, and then draw the highlights with eraser. So yeah, I was like carving into this essentially. Um, but yeah, first I had to cover the paper in charcoal. As you can see, it took for freaking ever. I had to like really, really smudge it out with my fingers because I didn't have a lot of charcoal. So I had to work with a very small amount and use it very sparingly. So, you know, that took a hot second, but we got there. I also ate this giant portobello mushroom. I think that's what it was from the grocery store. I air fried it with garlic and olive oil. It's definitely not something I would stomach every day or every week, maybe like once a month or two. Um, I don't know, it was all right, it was fine, I guess. But yeah, then I took my eraser, as you can see, it was kind of hard to get a good mid-tone with this just because we used the erasers in class and mine was pretty much covered in charcoal. So there is a layer of charcoal on that eraser that, um, makes it kind of difficult to use the way that we're using it just because um if you don't apply a lot of pressure it will just kind of smear around the charcoal nobody wants that so we got to really carve into it and then i just kept going back in with my finger to really get the the mid-tones and some details that i may not have been able to get with my eraser so yeah that was my main process and for this project, we had to just display our clothes in some way and draw them. So that's what I did. I got a pair of jeans and a shirt. They're both kind of different textures. So I thought that could be nice, a little versatile. And I also, fun fact, I did not need to mention this at all, but I turned this project in like almost two weeks late just because I was absent a lot and I forgot this project was due. And my teacher just does not like to post on our iCollege. So if I'm absent and he assigns something, I will literally just not know because he barely assigns at-home assignments. Anyway, besides that, this class has been lovely. I don't mean, I'm not trying to shit talk any professors. I actually really, really like this class. Um, I really like the drawing aspects of art, so it was really nice to delve into that. I haven't really gotten to do what I wanted to do in a lot of my art classes this year, so this one really let me do what I like doing. It's very therapeutic to draw clothes, in my opinion. Um, not me rambling, as I said I would. Anyway, yeah, I am just going at it. I really like I also went back in with some of my charcoal to get like certain textures, like for those ribs on the shirt. I went back in with charcoal and got those stripes in there. But yeah, this was the point I stopped at for the first session and I'm just finishing this up now. I don't really know when this was filmed. Like this probably took a couple days, maybe a weekend, but yeah. And maybe about like five hours, four or five hours perhaps. I don't even know. I, I really rushed it though. I was like literally on my hands and knees for this project on all fours. How sad, but we got it done. And I think it looks all right. Wow. He's my friend who animates. Not literally. <laughs>
it's gross out it's so dark and it's friday in spring break also i've been really obsessed with plants it's bad i have been alone with my plants and we're thriving honestly i'm learning a lot today my plan is to just chill and i have one stencil i need to finish by seven o'clock tonight because i'm tattooing someone then and then i'm gonna go to this show there's actually two shows at underground atlanta tonight one of them is like overpaid i don't know if y'all heard of overpaid but i matched with him on tinder so I feel like that would be funny if I showed up and he like recognized me But I also don't know if he'd recognize me and some friends of mine are performing at the same place at the same night I guess just like in a different part of the venue. So that's gonna be fun But it's gross and storming out So I hope I don't get caught in the rain and uber is expensive now because gas is expensive because everything's expensive I'm doing a lot of tattooing this week because it's spring break. I don't have any homework. It's gonna be a productive but great gross, stormy, disgusting day. We're living, laughing, and loving. It's right in front, literally right there. <laughs> this was me working on a stencil. I didn't have my little stencil scanner machine at the time. I actually bought it this night, but I didn't have it at the time. So I had to hand draw all of my stencils and silly me, I did them backwards at first. So I actually had to go back and do them facing the other way because I forgot I had to like reverse the image. So that was really fun. It took up like an hour of my day. Um, but yeah, the stencil scanner is definitely an investment because then I can just go to the library and print out my stuff and then scan it and then I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> very, very good investment. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna show you guys my plant progress because I've been obsessed with like house plants and watching house plant videos and all that. I'm gonna give a little tour and I'll update this over time just cause I think it's cute. In this corner, I have a Chinese evergreen and then I'm propagating some snake plants here. I got this from Ace Hardware. I don't know what plant it is, but I wanna call it a ghost plant because that's what it looks like on Google, but again, I can't really tell. So let me know if you guys know this exact plant. And then here I'm trying to propagate some succulents. This actually fell off of our succulent in the living room and I'm just putting it in here how I was planning to already. And then I took all these leaves off of other succulents. Over here, I tried to propagate this dying plant. It is not going very well. The leaves were already kind of like this. I cut them off of the dying plant and then put them in here and they've just been continuing to wither. I'm propagating some of this pothos plant. The roots are growing and then I put one of them in soil today actually. It was getting pretty long so I decided to put it in here and see what happens and I'm just letting the other ones grow a little more before they go in here as well. And then I'm propagating some more snake plants but in water. I don't know if it's working well or not. I can't can't really tell. This is my aloe vera plant. I got it from Ikea. Isn't that so pretty? This is my peace lily. I've had this for like a year. I also was being stupid and bored and decided to cut off the brown parts of the leaves, which crazy fun fact, it creates more browning when you decide to cut things off like that. I don't know. I don't know what I thought I was achieving there. I just, I'm learning about plants. I'm on a journey. And there are so many new leaves. Like these are all, I mean, relatively new, you know, it takes a while, but look at that little baby leaf so cute this is my snake plant i wrapped it in a little scarf that i thrifted i used to keep it in direct sunlight which was not a good idea but now it's in indirect sunlight i think she's doing pretty well these parts at the bottom that are cut off were from the propagations that i made but they are growing back relatively quickly which i did not expect i'm seeing beach house tonight for the second time so that's super exciting unless i can trade it for a drain gang ticket i've already seen beach house i actually saw them on my birthday in 2018, not to flick. I would rather see the Drain Gang World Tour than Beach House at this moment. So I'm gonna see if I can trade tickets with someone, but it probably won't happen, and I am perfectly okay with that. I 
I tried so hard to make this sandwich how I used to make it at home, but the bread just wasn't working, the stove and the pans just weren't doing it for this sandwich. I had to literally make it twice and I just messed it up every single time. I don't know how. And it was like, eh. Like I didn't even eat the whole thing, bruh. I feel bad, but sandwich, yay, girl boss. First ever thrift books purchase. I've been wanting to buy from thrift books for a while. It's an online thrift store, not sponsored. Genuinely just opening this on camera for funsies. The package was ripped right here. So that's interesting. I got a copy of Native Son by Richard Wright because I really liked the movie and I figured that the book had to be good. And I got a copy of Persepolis for school. Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut because the website recommended it. So I just put it in my cart. Everything was like four bucks and then plus shipping, my total was like $18. So I think that's pretty good. Obviously, if you go straight to a thrift store, the books are probably a lot cheaper, but... I also wanted to talk about Devoom. They sent me this little alarm clock. The time is displayed with little pixel guys. It has a little tail in the back. I haven't really used it as an alarm clock, but it is a good speaker. It is surprisingly loud. I did not expect it to be as loud as it is. The cool thing about Devoom is that you can actually download the Devoom app and then put animations on on here. It comes with some defaults. I made this winking frog. These are kind of the favorites that I've selected to be displayed on a kind of rotating thing. And then you can also go through and look at all the little default ones that are on here. I really like this one because it looks like the matrix and I love the matrix. These are the trending ones. People have made some really cool animations on here to be honest. I'm trying to get into it but it's a little difficult with the pixels. Honestly very inspiring. It's making me want to animate and learn how to do all that stuff. I will leave the link in the description if you want to check out this. Honestly, I did not expect this brand to just reach out to me, but they did, and I'm really glad they did. Thank you, Devoom, for sending this to me. It's pretty awesome. It's so cute. People always ask about it when they come over just because it's a cute little guy. Like, look at his little feet. It's so adorable. Anyway, I will spare you from playing the loudspeaker because it is... 10 30 in the morning and i don't want to annoy my roommates on this lovely friday morning so yeah check out the link in the description if you are interested in getting a devoom little alarm clock speaker guy thank you so much devoom go to the description down below if you want to cop one here i'm finishing up some homework and doing a kusama inspired flash because i love kusama so much she is my fave I just warmed up some pesto pasta, probably for way too long in the microwave. Last night I went to Tyler the Creator, it was really fun. I was just asked to go by this girl I met through Tinder and she just had an extra free ticket and Ben Staples opened, Kaliuch just opened. I think Tizo Touchdown also opened, but we got there too late, which sucks because I love Tizo Touchdown. Now I'm just gonna actually start editing this video that you're watching right now, so videoception. And then later tonight, I'm gonna babysit and then go to a rave right after, so. Yeah! And I'm also getting my schoolwork done, which I did not expect because it's been a very tumultuous week. The work I'm doing here is for my introductory studio course, and what I'm doing is basically replicating the painting on my right to the page on my left, and the only difference is that the colors are inverse to their complementary. So any red would be translated to green, any blue is orange, any purple is yellow, vice versa, etc., so on and so forth. So that was really difficult because I suck at proportions. Moving on to another floor activity. So my tattoo stencil scanner came in the mail and i know the mail room at gsu dorms probably hates me by now i get something at least once a month um just because all my tattoo stuff has been coming in through amazon in the mail room anyway i had to watch a lot of tutorial videos to figure out how to use this because i am not very technolo technologically inclined but i eventually figured it out and i'm so glad that i spent the money on this because it is such an investment also printing at gsu is is it's not free but it's very cheap it's like 10 cents or less for a piece of paper and that was really helpful because i could just go to the building that was a five minute walk away and then print everything that i needed and yeah it's really nice to have that because we don't have a printer in our dorm so that was convenient to have 
um, it was a good realization. Anyway, after those printed, I finally figured it out. I cut them all out. I rounded the edges of all the stencils just because I like the way it looks. And yeah, I did do a few designs, as you can see, that aren't really like my original style. You know, they're just stuff that people might have found on Pinterest that are really generic. And I think those are the last kind of tattoos like that that I want to do. And now I'm just about to set up for the tattoo of the day. I'm drinking some Arden's Garden Juice. I don't usually buy juice or smoothies like that, but this was very nice and refreshing. I like it. Good for the tummy. And then I just opened up my little tattoo bed. I keep it either under my actual bed or outside of my room most of the time. This is what she looks like. She's a little skinnier than I want her to be. And yeah, I have my little tattoo cart. Um, and I did not film any of the tattoo, but yeah, here is me the next day going to class with my portfolio and my little outfit. And I filmed this because it looked like tofu. I don't know what it is, but it, it looks like tofu. And now I'm walking back from class. Here I go. Wow. And yeah, there's a lot of walking going on. That's like 50% of college at this point. So there is a lot of walking. And I was also drawing outside because it was really nice out and I had time between classes. Honestly, sitting outside in the green space is so fun. And here is my drawing class. Here we had to just use some charcoal and colored charcoal for the midtones. And I drew a little Eeyore plushie that I saw with some other stuff that my professor set up. I don't know. All my work in that class has been really messy. And then I went home and I read Persepolis online. And this was before I got my copy of the book. I don't know, all my clips are out of order. Everything is a mess, but like, that's life. <laughs> and there's my silly little baggy outfit for the day. They them lesbian going on a journey. Um, and then I went to DeKalb Farmer's Market for my groceries, as I do, because I love DeKalb Farmer's Market. And I would walk 10 minutes to my car and drive 20 minutes just for getting groceries at DeKalb Farmer's Market. And then I had another assignment for my drawing class. And in this one, we had to pretty much just put a spoon or I think it was any piece of silverware really, but we had to put that in a glass of water. I don't have any glasses. We just have the cheap Target cups. So I used my measuring cup and I put a lot of effort into it. I didn't realize all the other kids in my class did not put as much effort as I put into this. Um, a lot of the drawings were in charcoal because my teacher did not specify a material. So I did the most intricate thing I could possibly do with my graphite and Compared to the other drawings during the critique, I wish I had used charcoal or something darker. Um, just because compared to the other pieces, mine did not stand out in terms of contrast. But I'm really proud of my work, honestly. And here's Beach House. <laughs> Okay, that was a nice little detour. Now we're back to the project. I literally got home and worked on this. It was just, ugh, I needed to finish it for my own sake. And yeah, this is it. This is the project. I did a lot of hatching just cause that ended up being a lot faster. And I didn't really finish the entire piece. I just kind of like made it really sketchy towards the outside, the outer edges. And then I took a detour on my iPad and I started to make a piece of paper to print um, of the tattoos that I was going to do. So I made a couple, a couple different versions of everything. Sorry, I'm like losing my voice. And yeah, I tried my best to organize everything so that it would fit and it wasn't all cluttered when I cut it out. And then I emailed it to myself and went back to this project. Rise and grind, grind and grind, nothing else. Mindset, grind set. And yeah, I just powered through this and it got really scribbly towards the end. But like, honestly, that is a very interesting thing to do because then you have like a focal point in the center and then everything kind of disperses as it goes farther out. So that's kind of interesting. Also, here's an update on my succulents. They kind of look the same and yep, all my plants. Oh my goodness, they are taking over my room. I did find a better way to keep all my snake plant propagations, so I did make 
a little more surface area space for myself by condensing that, but yeah. And then I decided to give myself a stick and poke on the floor. I do not condone this. This was very, very like on a whim, irrational decision making. Honestly, I did feel the need to kind of show this process because I've been seeing a lot of people do stick and pokes or even have a tattoo gun without even like wearing gloves or trying to follow the proper precautions. Um, and honestly, like bloodborne diseases are serious. And like, if you're doing tattoos, please take the correct precautions, wear gloves, don't reuse anything. Um, you know, just be safe about it. Treat everyone as if they have a bloodborne disease. Um, that is the best way to go about tattooing. Please don't be stupid. Um, but yeah, I wanted to put this out there in case anyone was curious about tattooing. Please do your research because, you know, it, it, it happens regardless. No matter what parents say, kids are gonna give themselves shitty stick and pokes. But yeah, please do your research. Don't use a sewing needle. Use the right needles and, you know, just go about it safely, as safe as you can, because there is no harm in being safe with needles. <laughs> um, no harm at all and no shame. It's actually a very, very good thing to do your research with things like this. And the internet is an incredible place. You can learn so much from a simple YouTube video on tattooing from professionals. So yeah, here is my finished tattoo. I love it so much. Good morning. I'm like doing my laundry and stuff and also getting some work done. I am going to print some of the flash that I made and tattoo it today, which I'm super excited about. And also, I'm eating apples and peanut butter and reading some comments. This one says, I don't want to be rude, but when I was in fourth grade, I nearly was able to draw realistic stuff. Some of y'all leave interesting comments. I love reading them. It's like entertainment. To understand his early life. Kafka was born, his father was a highly successful well-to-do businessman who, through sheer force of will and a child that would measure up to his ideals. that I've been working on. Today is currently April 20th. This is what I've been working in my intro to studio class. Like this, nobody, nobody. these like four or five pieces right here are everything that we've worked on for the entire semester. There's one drawing that we have worked on for the entire like four months of the semester and that is this. We started with the lightest colors like yellow and orange and then we got darker as we went on and added different pieces of paper, like different shaped pieces of paper, or we would have to go around our hands and leave different silhouettes. And this would create a lot of different positive and negative space. It was more of an assessment of your nervous system. That's how our teacher said it. Um, and I honestly like very much understand it. Like it, it feels really natural and organic and I want to make more art like this. And also just the fact that it lasted for multiple months. I am not usually working on a piece for that long. So it was really nice to see something come together over that long of a time. Throughout the semester, we had to take our drawing at its current state and do a gouache version of it. So we had to paint it. Um, it didn't need to be like exact. A lot of the other students in my class did a painting that was more like a loose interpretation and still kind of had some of the same patterns and everything going on, but nothing super crazy and intricate, but I'm insane. Let me show you guys the first painting. So while it was red, yellow, and orange, this was like a month in. That was our first gouache painting. And then this was one that we had to continually update. And then it was this one. This is a gouache version of the drawing that has like all of the details I can possibly add. And then from that version, we had to do one, the exact same painting, but with complementary colors of the ones that we painted on the other painting. So that is this one. And then we had to make a replica of our 
direct copy painting and make it grayscale by mixing secondary colors. We had our last class today, so I got to say goodbye to everyone and we got to put our little magazine together because we're putting all of these pieces in a kind of catalog. If you're at Georgia State, I would recommend taking Introductory Studio with Don Goski. He's a pretty good professor, I would say. Shout out Craig. Also, all my plants are around me because I'm actually drawing these two right here. This is my still life for my drawing one class. So this class was more of just still life drawing, very quick. Although it was a three hour studio class, we only had three hours, which sounds like a lot of time, but it's not when you're constantly working on an art piece, if that makes sense. We used a lot of charcoal, we used, um, we started using ink towards the end, and right now this is our last assignment. I am drawing these plants. We had to do two objects that display distance in the composition and then add a kind of fabric material to it. So that's what this is. I'm not really happy with it. I haven't really been paying attention to it while I'm drawing. I just kind of like watch whatever I'm watching and kind of half-ass it. I think I'm gonna end this semester with like a 3.85 or something like that. So that's cool. Proud of myself. Giving myself a little pat on the back. We have to move out in around two weeks. So I'm gonna start moving out now since my house is like half an hour away from here. I'm a maximalist decorator. My room without all of the craziness and colors in it is definitely going to depress me. It's finals week, but I don't really have any finals. I have like one final assignment and a final test next week and that's it. Pretty chill. Second semester is definitely worse than first semester for me though, in my opinion. First semester was such a breeze and it was like warm out most of the time and now it's just been really cold and gross and it definitely changes my entire mindset to be honest that's my little check-in and i will see you when i see you